Yes, today's game was supposed to be Star Wars X-Wing, but that game requires a serious time commitment, and I happen to get sick right around the start of capturing game footage. So that review is going to have to wait. Instead, let's do a text mode game from Apogee. Yeah, I'm not going to keep the music going. Besides, you don't get the sound effects if you leave the music on. Anyways, because I barely had any time to work on an episode this week due to being kinda ill, I went through my collection of ancient DOS games and picked something small enough that I could put a review together of as quickly as possible. And that game is... Caves of Thor. Though it's more aptly named the Thor Trilogy, since the second and third episodes of the game are titled Realms of Thor and Thor's Revenge. But then that's just confusing it with the Thor's Hammer Trilogy, which I reviewed way back in episode 14. In any case, the Thor games are really simple and thus make for a good, short review, so let's start things off with the game stats. All of the Thor games were developed by Todd Replogle under his Scenario Software banner and published by Apogee in 1989. They're one-player action games which primarily run in a 40 by 25 16 color text mode and only support PC speaker sound. Thus, they work on just about any computers you can throw at them. As for the release date, all three Thor games have been freeware since the end of 2005 and can be downloaded easily from the 3D Realms website at www.3drealms.com. The story is as simple as it gets. You find yourself trapped in the Caves of Thor and must find three special objects to escape, known as the male, female, and heart symbols. Thankfully, you have a weapon of some sort that's never actually given a name, but it has unlimited ammo and can shoot down the many enemies you'll face. You also find a bunch of items along the way to help you out. Now, several of you may have noticed by now that your health slowly decreases and you have to destroy enemy generators that continually spawn enemies. Yeah, this game was definitely inspired by Gauntlet. But where Gauntlet was brutally difficult since it was an arcade game, Caves of Thor is actually pretty easy. Though the later games Realms of Thor and Thor's Revenge add a maximum health limit, which you can boost in various ways, and they're also a lot trickier overall in level design than the first game. Shooting in this game may seem simple enough, but it can take a little getting used to. Basically, you shoot in the same direction you previously moved in, even if you were pushed in that direction by flowing water. I guess it's the same way it works in Gauntlet, but I really prefer being able to just move and shoot independently in games like this. Still, the enemies don't really move fast enough to be much of a threat unless they gang up on you from all angles, in which case you'll want to use one of your special potions that flash the area around you, destroying all enemies in the process. Well, all enemies that are within range of it, though these potions have no effect on enemy generators nor on the Thor beasts. You can tell if you're going to fight a Thor beast or not because the floor color will be red instead of grey. The Thor beasts stay perfectly still and take a good number of hits to destroy while rapidly spawning new enemies. The best way to take these things out is to get in really close and just mash away at the spacebar. Though you need to keep in mind that you can only have one shot in the air at a time, so every time you hit spacebar, if you already have a shot in the air, it'll disappear in an instant as you fire your next shot. This means you can only fire rapidly at things that are close to you, otherwise your shots just won't go anywhere. Taking the layout of a level into account is important too. The green grassy areas are tall enough that the enemies can't spot you, so as long as you're over some grass, the enemies will just wander around trying to figure out where you are, leaving you safe enough to take out any targets you can aim at. In Thor's Revenge, you also have to deal with platforms that fall away once you step off of them, turning into lava, which essentially makes them one way only, unless you don't mind losing a few hundred units of health trying to backtrack. 
You also need to find keys to unlock gates, and this leads into something really important. If you spot a gate before you get the key for it, backtrack and open that gate once you have the key. Or better yet, get as many keys as you can without opening anything, then backtrack for the very first gate you pass that's still locked. It's very possible to end up in a situation where you don't have the keys necessary to continue because you wasted them on gates that were too far ahead of you, or on useless gates that you probably shouldn't have opened in the first place. Thankfully, you have the ability to quick save mid-game by pressing C, and quick load from the title screen by also pressing C. However, you can't quick load mid-game, so you're gonna have to get yourself killed or quit and restart if you want to reload your game. Every time you enter a questionable area, you're probably gonna want to save just in case. Lastly, there's a couple interesting things you'll encounter later on. Each of the Thor games has an item hidden somewhere called the Rebounder, which allows your shots to rebound off of the walls. Now, this can be helpful for destroying the enemy generators that are behind corners and stuff, but it's actually really difficult to effectively use. Realms and Revenge also have special confusers present, and if you touch a confuser, all of the enemies in the level will start behaving completely erratically for a moment, giving you a chance to get by a group of them unscathed and into a position where you can kill them easily once they're not confused anymore. And yeah, that's really all there is to the Thor games. Keep your health up with food, shoot down the enemies, find the three symbols, and win the game. Really simple stuff and a fun play at least once if you have any interest at all in text mode games. DOSBox settings are as simple as they get, just leave cycle set to auto and you're good to go. In fact, if you try to use a fixed setting or the max setting, the games might not even start properly. Anywho, that's all for today's episode of Ancient DOS Games. Sorry to have to delay the review of X-Wing, but that's what happens when you're a one-man show and you suddenly get hit with a virus or whatever. Actually, with the Christmas season coming up, I'm going to have even less time to work on these videos. So instead, there's going to be three fillers coming up, and I'm going to take the opportunity just to give all of you an idea of the kind of hardware collection I'm working with, including my computers, my video game consoles, and my portable gaming systems. So if you're curious about all that, then make sure you stay tuned.